hello, Vibrant. Welcome to another episode of Next Level Podcast uh, for the Summer Reading Series. We're glad that you're joining with us. I have here along with me Carl George, who is the campus pastor down at York Haven, and Aaron Lax, our worship pastor, is joining us today as we dive in with Carl um, going to the next level of his sermon this past Sunday morning um, at Lamb's Gap on the book of Simple Church by Tom Rainer. So, hey, glad that you guys are here with us. Let's dive in and just um, really take people deeper, Carl, into your sermon and allow you to expound upon and go into further detail um, on what you talked about this past morning. So let me just intro uh, with you on this question. How did this book get into your hands? And then of all the books that I'm sure that you've read in the past years, why is it that this one made it to the pulpit? Well, this one is a continuation of a theme that has impacted my life for a long time. Uh, when I was a, first in the ministry, um, the, the, the missionary I was talking to, I referred to him in one of my sermons, I forget which, which service it was, but a missionary came alongside me and he asked me, what are you doing to reach people for Christ and to disciple them into Christ's likeness? And I had no answer for him. I was, we were a busy church, but we had no answers. So he actually gave me a book called Sacred Cows Make Gourmet Burgers. And it had a lot of the had a great title. <laughs> it, had, it had a lot of the premises of Simple Church in it. And then late, years later, uh, well, actually, I take it back. It was about a year later I read uh, The Purpose Driven Church, mm. which, you know, built on those concepts. And then The Simple Church is the latest iteration of that, that theme. Um, but if you if you really look at it, this theme goes all the way back to the early church. I mean, if you want to talk about simple church, you really go back to the book of Acts yeah. and the way they did church. That was very simple, very powerful, very meaningful, and they changed the world. They turned the world upside mm-hmm. down. So that's one of the reasons why this book meant so much to me, because it's, it's good that the church is holding on to these concepts and, and seeking to apply them. Yeah. You said that sometimes what looks simple is complicated, um, and even ask the question of why does everybody have to make things so complicated? But you mentioned in the in the pendulum swing, though, um, people have seemed to oversimplify the church. That it's a cereal aisle. Hey, there's 250 different varieties. Pick one; they're all going to get you in the same direction. But uh, I would almost ask the question, in people trying to oversimplify, do you think it's actually made things more complicated? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think things are things are complicated because there are, things are complicated. I mean, mm. That's the way life is. Life is complicated. What makes life simple is not avoiding life. It's the way we respond to life. Mm. That's what makes life simple because uh, it's – I grant you, I believe that the world is more complicated now than any time in my lifetime. But if I respond to it with biblical intent, if I respond in according to biblical principles, then it simplifies, th- it simplifies things down a lot to me. I mean, the way I treat you, the way I treat my neighbor, the way I react to your feelings, your, your thoughts, your, um, your life, is simplified by Jesus Christ. I define my reactions according to him. So does that answer your question? I think I might be yeah. a rabbit. No, no. I, I like that dichotomy of it's not about avoiding because certainly people have done that, been hermits and go, and, you know, there's famous authors that have done that, just kind of lived solitary, almost a monastic life, um, avoiding all the world's problems and compl- compl- complicated things. But instead, you're saying it's more about how we respond to the situations of this world, the things that we encounter that simplify things, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. It really does. It it focuses us on keeping the the, you know the main thing, the main thing, if you will, Mm -hmm. gives us purpose. So, Carl, I was I was talking with Zach this morning about uh, I was sharing something I had heard recently and. um, made me think of your sermon from the Sunday that this is a quote from another pastor um, sharing in his sermon as well. Uh, there are other, uh, there are other pastors that recognize that people have 
made um, our visits to church and our engagement in church more than, than what it's supposed to be. And uh, the quote was um, that uh, in a post-COVID environment, most Christians today um, are choosing to go to churches based off of ideology and not theology. So they care more about uh, a church environment that matches their um, personal political beliefs and convictions rather than asking, well, hey, what do these people believe about God? And I think to your point that you just said, uh, let's keep the main thing the main thing, with, you know, obviously without uh, ignoring the fact that we are in a culture that is very complicated and we're a, we're a church that is, we are a people that was created for such a time as this. Um, would love to just kind of hear your thoughts and, and how we reconcile uh, being that church uh, in a complicated world, but also keeping the main thing the main thing. Mm. Uh, I recently talked to the woman who was a member of a cult, and uh, she was a member of the cult for years until she started talking to them about how their beliefs applied to a situation in her family. And when they responded to her, uh, she said, "That's I can't I can't live by that. I'm I'm out of here. Um, if you go to a church based on your preferences according to the, the worship style or the political bent of the pastor, or any of those topical issues that people are attracted to, and not the not the theological basis, mm-hmm. you just undercut. You know." Your whole relationship, your whole reason for having a relationship with yeah. the church, and at some point, it's going to show up and mm. it's going to drive you out of that church. Yeah. It, it, absolutely, I'm well, about that. Well, I think when a church caters to that, um, when they're wanting to go to into the discussions, the teachings that the people are seeking about the, uh, the complicated things of life, and you, you you've left the main thing, the main thing, and you for you forfeited the gospel for gossip. Um, it's ultimately going to cause you to become a shallow church, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Um, because this, the simple, though the gospel is simple, it's certainly not shallow <laughs> by no means. Right. It, its depth, honestly, is unfathomable where God will call us and lead us to go. Um, but but it's, it, So it's simple, but not shallow. But it's, right. I, that's that's exactly what I mean when I said it's simple, not simplistic. Mm. That's it. We're just paraphrasing it perfectly. I like your, your the way you put it. It's not shallow. It's not simplistic. It's not. It's it's not just one of the cereal boxes you pull off the shelf. There's there's substance here. We're oh, talking yeah. about we're talking about a faith that changes every aspect of our lives. Mm. That's what we're. That's what I hope people want. That's what we should all want. Is a faith that is a is a core component of who we are for eternity. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's uh, if, if I had more time to preach on this topic, mm-hmm. it would definitely be. I know that was one of your questions, right? Yeah, well, yeah. You jumped ahead on me here. Yeah, go ahead. Take I, it. I jumped ahead of you. Then it kind it. of applies to what you just said. Um, I would focus on Paul's situation, and when he was preaching this, he was in jail. Okay, he was he was under house arrest when he was preaching this. Mm-hmm. And, but when you look at the context of what he was preaching when he said, I have one, one focus, okay, and, and that is, well, let me just get, let me get Philippians chapter 3. But whatever things were gained to me, these things I have counted as lost because of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Mm. Well, that is, that's invaluable right there. He says that that is worth everything. He, he also, I, I love that you bring that up because he also, I loved mm. his his powerful yet simplistic approach to life. And he had one philosophical philosophical statement about his approach to, to anything in life. To live as Christ, to, to die as gain. The there was king. literally yeah. nothing you could do to the man. You could imprison him and he'd convert your mm. guards. You could kill him. Great. I'm going <laughs> to live in unending joy for the rest of my life. Perfect. Uh, and it's such a yeah. simple statement that just kind of helped him navigate all of his situations in life where his authority or where his loyalties lied, how, how he prioritized uh, relationships, all because of simple statements like that that were so profound, just like the one you shared. Mm-hmm. So his identity was Christ. Like, 
knowing Christ, Christ in him, to be an ambassador of Christ. It was all about Jesus. And I think where it becomes complicated is when we want to identify ourselves in so many other things. We want to find our worth in our sexuality, our identity in our sexuality. We want to find our our worth um, in how we perform in sports or in academics. And ultimately, at the end of the day, whenever we just center ourselves on Jesus, Everything else just falls in its proper place. Yeah, and, and how many people, including myself, how many of us realize how deep and profound our relationship with God is through Jesus Christ? I mean, yeah. it, I, I, if we could see ourselves the way God sees us, you know, what what kind of impact would that have on us? You know, yeah. And as, as his child, as his, as his beloved, as a, uh, ahead, as, as a as a father uh, of two young kids, um, I feel like the older they get, uh, the more complicated things get uh, because then mm-hmm. uh, you, you factor in sports and school and all this stuff. And I think our culture is really good at, at taking something that should be so simple like having a family and making it extremely complicated. And, and I, mm-hmm. I just, for me, uh, the Lord is always hemming me in and hemming us all in and deconstructing us to construct us. And I think whenever I feel the stress and the weight of like, oh, my gosh, my schedule's too busy. I don't have time to, to do this and this. What about church and, and all that? Uh, there's there's just this, this feeling that I get through the Holy Spirit that just says, slow down. You don't need all this stuff being a family mm-hmm. is very simple and it's so so true in the church too so true in the church we don't need the programming is great uh you know i'm a big advocate of of bringing our best on sunday morning and and exploring mm-hmm. all these different mediums to explore our relationship to god through lighting and music and all this stuff but at the end of the day if the core isn't i'm pursuing this out of a love of jesus christ and the love of god then it, then it gets incredibly complicated and can really kind of break away at the foundations of the church. Yeah. Carl, how do you see the Sabbath playing into um, Christians finding simplicity, finding sim- simplicity in faith? Yeah, you know, in fact, there's a big movement nowadays uh, observing the Sabbath day and, you know, rekindling the Sabbath, if you would. Um, and I think it's, I think it's healthy for a person to take a day where their their primary focus is to to focus on their their relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. Whether that's Saturday, whether it's Sunday, whether it's Tuesday if they have Tuesday off, whatever you know. Uh, I know when I was hired here, Drew was insistent that I get away one day, you know, away from the church, away to, to be. Uh, he didn't call it Sabbath, but the idea was there, you know, to to really rekindle the relationship and to get revived. So um, I think that, that is, I think that's important. What do you think, Zach? I think it's the, it's the day to just kind of strip everything away and go to really, like I said, keep the main thing, the main thing that, um, well, I, maybe in some way the same principle of fasting that while um, it's easy for me to fill my life um you know, um, I'm, I'm going to strip some of those things away to where I'm just able to focus on my need for Jesus and my need to know him more. Um, yeah, I don't know that I've really thought about that um, and explore that all the way. And it's not it's certainly not something that I practice well in my own life. I, I'm not good at resting. Um, Aaron, Aaron can agree here. Oh, well, and, and Carl, you raised a family with having kids at home. And then on the weekend, you need to mow the yard and keep up with this and that. And you have practices or you have whatnot. Um, rest is hard to come by. But I find that when I'm not resting or taking a day to just kind of simplify things, I so often neglect just simple time with Jesus. Yeah. Time to be quiet before yeah. him. The problem is, is when you make it legalistic. Yeah. That's mm. that's when it, that's when the issue arises, and that was the problem with the Jews. They made it a very legalistic experience. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad to have both of you here in this conversation because, Aaron, what you said about bringing quality and excellence into the worship service is meaningless unless the purpose of that is to review 
to remove all obstacles to people seeing Jesus. And mm-hmm. I know that's your heart, and I know that's the heart of the, the worship team, that they want more than anything else to be behind the vision of Christ in the front, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And, um, and I, I think that that's, that's part of being a simple church, is that lifting him up is the first, first priority. And then, and Zach, you, your ministry of, of working with the church and bringing people through the process of, okay, how do we take people and we help them to enrich their lives and become more like Christ? That's your, that's your role in this. Mm-hmm. So those two aspects are two of the foundational parts of, of this whole concept. Yeah. yeah. I, I spent a little bit of time um, with our worship team in the past couple of weeks doing some training and, again, trying to keep that model of, um, simple but profound, keeping the main thing the main thing. Um, so we talked about, you know, what are there are three things that really make up uh, the vision of worship at Vibrant. One is that we're Christ-centered. No one can get to the Father except through Jesus, and so he must always be a central theme of our worship. Number two, that everything we do will always be vertically oriented, has to be God-oriented, not man-oriented. And then three, because of the first two, because of Jesus being our access to the Father and then being vertically oriented in our gifts and bringing our gifts before God, it will be horizontally efficacious that by seeing our testimony, and just are just simply mm. loving God, people will say, "Hey, there's something different here, and I want to be a part of that." Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Carl, uh, you asked a really good question uh, towards the end of your your message, and it's kind of a response to people um, who are wanting to proclaim that out of my goodness, I'm going to inherit eternal life. And you also dabbled in the story of the rich young ruler. Um, and yet he said, if we are so good, then why did his punishment have to be so severe? Did you did you come up with that question or is that something that uh, how did you come upon it? I just I love the, the thought of the simplicity of that question of if we're such good people, then why did Jesus have to take such a severe punishment? Yeah. No, I, I came up with it just from. <laughs> Your brilliance. I've, I've, I've been looking at the cross for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> And I just remember thinking, you know, countless times, this is my punishment. This is, mm. you want to see who I am, you know, look at the cross and yeah. you see who I really am. And no excuses. There's no, I have no mm. excuses for anything. The cross is my pen, penalty. It is who I am. But you also in the cross see the love of the Father for me. Mm-hmm. And in, in that, I make no excuses either. And that's, that drives me on then from that point on. So yeah. that's where that came from. That's a really good question. Aaron, do you have anything else you want to you throw into this conversation? You know, I, I was just, again, uh, like Zach was saying, when you asked that question, it's such a, um, it's a profound thought. When, when, and I think uh, I've heard it said that the two most important things about you are what you see, what you think about yourself, and what you think about God, and the, and how the mm-hmm. two correlate. Um, and, and that's really it, isn't it? Is when we see ourselves truly as the sinful human beings that we are, with no partiality, that we're all fallen short of the glory of God. Um, it's it creates a in me it creates a holy fear. Uh, and a holy reverence, but also a holy mm. appreciation of God, a holy worship of God. Um, just like you said, staring at the cross long enough, uh, mm. it's going to make you really aware of, of who you once were and who you now are in Christ. Yeah. And, and it really impacts the way you relate to other people, as you just implied. It, it changes your relationships. Um I heard, heard somebody recently say, I, I can't remember what it, the exact thing that he said, but they were, they were talking about somebody that insulted them. And um, they said in their heart, they were thinking, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm much worse than you just said I am. <laughs> but they didn't say it out loud, but that's their reaction. Mm-hmm. That allowed them then to be free to, Instead of dealing with the insult, instead of dealing with the garbage that was just thrown at them, it gave them the freedom then to say to them, redemptiveness, yeah. you know, in, mm-hmm. in the middle of that situation. So, 
it, it, it is come. It comes back then to how do we see ourselves? How do we see God? How do we see, then see each other? Yeah. All right. Well, hey, Carl, thank you so much, and Aaron for taking the time to hop on to this uh, this podcast. Carl, is there anything else you want to throw in before we wrap this up? Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, we love it. I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that we're doing this just to give pastors an opportunity to um, take maybe what they had to cut off, you know, uh, due to time constraints or, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You look back and you listen to your sermon, you're like, why didn't I go further on this point? Here's just a, a, a neat opportunity for a pastor to go, you know what, I didn't get to really go into detail about this, but hey, let me tell you more about this point. And, and, and for all of us, you know, when we listen, uh, questions come to mind or, wow, I really liked this point. I would love for them to highlight. So this is just a, uh, you know, we do this in hopes that this will take people into another level with the teaching and be fruitful and beneficial for those who are listening and encouraging you in your walk with Jesus as you listen to the pastors teach and that it may be uh, fruitful and beneficial to you. So with that being said, as we're doing each week, we are giving away, uh, we're randomly drawing two names to give away two free copies of the book that the pastor brought to the pulpit that Sunday. So I have two copies here of Simple Church. Wherever you listen to this podcast, there will be a link provided where you can go and just enter, uh, I think it's just your name and potentially your email address and phone number, and we will randomly select two people, and then I will get in contact with you if you are the winner for you to come and pick up a free copy of Simple Church by Tom Rayner. So we hope that this is uh, just a fruitful time for you to, to listen in as Carl just gave a little further depth into his message this Sunday and to, to win a free copy and that this may be um, just all around a blessing to you as you walk in faith with us as we're all seeking to know Jesus more. You all take care. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.